it's very important what you said that we don't need to focus only on the technology. Mm. The technology is a little part of it, or um, as I would say it like in a very catchy phrase, it's like AI is only 20% AI. What's up, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Digitalog, our podcast at Die Produktmache, where we cover all things digital, whether it be community, work culture, or the uh, digital solutions that we build for our clients. My name is Rosaria. I am a software engineer on the technology team, and I'm really thrilled to have with me today the lovely Lorenzo. How are you going? Hi, Rosaria. Doing great. Awesome. Uh, Lorenzo is a data scientist on the Deja team, and it would be really awesome if you gave a bit of an introduction about what you do here. Sure. Um, so I joined DPM two and a half years ago mm -hmm. and uh, joined the data science team, which is one of the uh, many teams that we have here as we cover all aspects of uh, a digital product uh, at DPM. And uh, I've been working on a lot of different topics from like data strategy to um, machine learning implementation to mm -hmm. web analytics. And uh, I would say that I'm kind of a generalist in the data science area and mm. uh, I focus a lot, especially here at DPM, on the intersection between the data science aspect of a product and the other aspects. So I work a lot uh, mm -hmm. with you, with your team, the technology team, but also with the product management and the UX design teams um, mm -hmm. on, on several kind of different products. Nice. And I, th I think it's important to bring up, uh, like Dasha is a really hot topic right now with, with so many businesses. And I think a, a data driven approach is um, something that businesses know they need to take. It's very crucial in this age, but not many know how. Uh, what are some typical challenges that you see many businesses face? There are a lot of challenges and mm -hmm. especially, I mean, one of the main challenges is to get uh, over this uh, buzzwords barrier that uh, yeah, yeah. that um, surrounds all the all the topics about data science, AI, machine learning, mm -hmm. IoT. You hear a lot of uh, yeah. of these words, and uh, business leaders um, often don't really grasp what this is about. And what they do is that they hire a data science team and they expect them then to do something with their products, mm -hmm. with their business, to make it successful. But that's really not how it works. Mm. Um, I mean, to understand why data is important um, in in this uh, in the times we're living in, uh, first of all, think about the products that you see around, that you use uh, on a daily basis, mm -hmm. uh, the most successful digital products like social media, yeah. uh, Spotify, streaming platforms, they all rely a lot on data. Mm -hmm. And what they do with this data is that they uh, leverage it to make the user experience better in a way that the users uh, don't need to make to to have a lot of efforts to take decisions right yeah. so if you think you open yeah. your uh, favorite streaming platform and an algorithm tells you already what's the next movie you want to watch mm. And uh, this is one of the aspects. There are other aspects at a business level where business leaders, um, they want to look at data to have hard facts that uh, suggest them and help them to take better decisions. So mm -hmm. uh, all the different levels where you can use data to, um, to take decisions uh, are important and can be taken into account. Uh, but to do that, you cannot just have a team working in a... a like isolated environments, a silo uh, on their yeah, own. Yeah, in a yeah, silo, yeah. exactly. You need yeah. that team to be integrated within your business, mm -hmm. and uh, first of all, being uh, facing the right problems and uh, uh, like addressing real problems that the business faces, mm -hmm. uh, so that uh, then uh, the the business metrics can go up if these problems are solved with data science. You need to provide them a good data infrastructure so that mm -hmm. uh, actually they can work with the data and mm -hmm. they don't have to like go through Excel sheets, uh, duplicated data or even no data uh, for problems that they want to solve. Mm -hmm. um, and then you need to make sure that they optimize the right, uh, the right metrics so that they don't focus on their uh, like nerdy technical uh, AI metrics, but they really um, know what's important for the business in terms of what are the KPIs that yeah. they need to uh, yeah. optimize. So crucial. Yeah. And also yeah. that in the end, what they need to deliver is something that is integrated within a product. So mm -hmm. it's not just an algorithm that performs well on your machine, but it's something that interacts with the user interface and all the other aspects okay. of, uh, of a digital product. Yeah, yeah. 
So yeah, we have a really hands-on approach here at DPM, which is, yeah, to include data and everything, as you sort of just pointed out. Uh, and I think it's really important to note that we don't focus only on the technology. And you sort of briefly touched it just there, but you know, what are some other ways or um, ideas of, of how we can approach these challenges? Um, yeah, <clears> that's very important what you said, that we don't need to focus only on the technology. Mm. The technology is a little part of it, or um, as I would say it like in a very catchy phrase, it's like AI is only 20% AI. Okay. As I said, these other aspects like solving the right problem, yeah. uh, finding and uh, taking care that the data is clean and uh, measuring the right metrics and integrating it in a product, mm. these are all very important aspects, but maybe it's a bit abstract, so I don't know, mm -hmm. we can talk about some projects we work together on uh, to, to make it more yeah, concrete also for definitely. our public. I mean, we, we both recently sort of uh, worked together on uh, one project, which is for one of our clients who is a major uh, player in the chemical products uh, industry. And we built for them a, a customer portal where their customers can make these purchases digitally. I mean, what did you see there as the, the most glaring problem that they had? Yeah, this was a very, very interesting example, I think, because uh, there you can see how from one place, like building a customer portal, which is, uh, I don't know, you can imagine like this e-commerce platform where you can buy chemicals. Uh, from this point, then we realized that there was potential for uh, leveraging data to mm -hmm. uh, streamline and uh, improve the processes behind this product. In that specific example, um, yeah, for a customer portal uh, from an online platform, you can you you need some data that needs to be fed into this platform. In mm -hmm. the case was the data about the chemical products that were being sold on the platform, mm -hmm. and uh, this data needs to be somewhere in a database, digitalized, uh, and uh, and to get this data there. Uh, we realized that our customer was having a very um, manual and uh, time costly process where they were getting PDF files from mm -hmm. the producers of the products and they were basically copy pasting uh, the information from this uh, PDF files into their database yeah. manually. And these were like experts in their fields who were doing exactly this, because this yeah tedious labor yeah. to comply with the regulations to make sure that the information that was mm. copied uh, in the database was correct. They needed to actually employ, as you said, experts in the field. So mm. uh, you can imagine that at this point they were facing two challenges. Mm -hmm. Like on one side, having a very time costly uh, process yeah. where the time to market of the products from the moment they received the information from the producers to the moment these products were available for their customers on the digital mm. platform was very long time. Yeah. And on the other side, they were facing uh, a high employee churn because they are, um, the people that were working on this mm. were not really happy of doing this manual, repetitive, tedious yeah. Uh, job. Yeah. I think that we, I mean, I worked on the development of it and I, I feel really good that we took a really streamlined approach, but how would you say that we did that? Um, I think the, the, the key there was to really focus on these two problems, like uh, yeah, the time to market for a product and the employee satisfaction. And of course, when you hear something like, oh, there's a task that is repetitive and mm. that is done manually, uh, as a data scientist, you get triggered and you say, wow, yes. we can automate this, right? I can do this, and, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, um, but the point is, uh, yeah, we can automate this, but the questions raise, how much can we automate this? Mm. Uh, is the result of our automated process what the machine is doing, mm. uh, satisfying enough for, for the client? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, these are like very important questions that you always need to ask yourself yeah. as a data scientist because... Uh, in this way, you're sure that uh, you come up with a solution that actually solves the problem and it's not just, uh, you know, some, uh, yeah, data science can do that, but not 100% and, uh, yeah. and it's bad. Yeah, I mean, what comes to mind is, is that I think a lot of people hear, you know, what, what a data scientist does or these topics and it just sounds so technologically heavy, but there's such a strong human element to it. And I think we, we really solved a problem for the client, but we also really solved a problem for the customer of the client. Uh, so yeah, it was a really great project to work on. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And uh, to go back to the topic of, uh, you know, um, 
was the solution good enough in the mm. end? Um, I think I, I want to bring up this uh, this topic of um, of measuring the success mm -hmm. of an AI application. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> because in that case, um, as a data scientist, okay, you say let's automate this, and then uh, you start uh, trying out your algorithm, mm -hmm. seeing how it extracts the information. So how accurate is the information that you that the algorithm gets out of the PDF files? Mm -hmm. And uh, we realized it was good, but kind of good. And okay. then we asked our clients, how accurate needs this information to be? And they said, it needs to be 100% accurate because okay. there are mm -hmm. legal requirements that yeah. need to be satisfied. I mean, you're talking about the chemical products and uh, uh, it's something where regulations are kind of strong and you cannot display a false information. Mm. On the, on the portal. So with this 100%, uh, there's no algorithm that performs 100%. And okay. uh, yeah, so there uh, it became clear that we needed to go a bit beyond our data science bubble and start mm. talking about uh, um, talking to the UX team, talking about yep. talking to the users, talking to you guys from the technology team to come mm. up with a solution that in the end um, was still solving the business issues. Mm -hmm. So the time to market and the employee satisfaction um, but and was leveraging data science uh, um, capabilities in the mm -hmm. case that were limited in terms of uh, accuracy, but yeah. uh, but still, um, yeah, were yeah. able to to solve the main challenges. Yeah, and and I think again, it's really important to note that we we focused on the business metrics really, and not not just what the algorithm could do or what what was the possibility. It was really focused on what are the key metrics that we need. To focus on here and you know solve and improve yeah and uh and to do that uh as i said we needed to come up of the bubble and come up with an actual digital product mm. so the final product of our work as a data science team was not an algorithm yeah was an actual product where the users could uh, on one side uh, see what the algorithm was uh, returning mm -hmm. so imagine uh, you need to um, you have this pdf files and you need to extract informations like what's the product name what's the chemical characteristic the ingredients of this product mm -hmm. and so on and our algorithm was extracting this information mm -hmm. not 100% uh, correct so the users, the employees were able to see on one side what the algorithm response was, mm -hmm. on the other side, the ground truth, so the actual PDF file, and right. to compare very quickly and to cool. see, okay, yeah. here the algorithm was right, we approved yeah. this. Here the algorithm was not right. And mm -hmm. uh, thanks to also our UX team and mm -hmm. uh, you guys from the front end developing a, a very nice user interface, they were able to correct this information very quickly yeah. so that in the end, they were able to process uh, a product information faster than before mm -hmm. so taking half of the time that we were taking before yeah. uh, and at the same time comply with the precision uh, with the accuracy requirements uh, from uh, from the business and we're happier because uh, their job was now not anymore like opening pdf files opening another tool where to copy the information tedious, tedious but work, was really yeah. like working with a very nice um like modern tool that was yeah. uh, also valuing their expertise. Mm -hmm. Totally. So a, a user approach and a data approach. Nice. Um, <laughs> well, unfortunately, I think that's all we have time for today. But thank you so much for coming in, Lorenzo. Thank you, Rosaria. No problem. Super insightful. Uh, yeah, if you liked this, hit the like button or hit subscribe. We're always, always interested in your opinions or your feedback. So drop a comment below. I promise it will not go unanswered. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, uh, give us a review, five stars. And yeah, thank you so much for joining.